Hey, what's up guys? Here are 5 things you should avoid when buying a new tennis racket. I'm guilty of a few in the past and I'm sure you too as well. The last one is maybe the most important one and without further ado, let's start with the first one. Firstly, it is important not to buy racket simply because your favorite pro player uses it. While it can be tempting to want to emulate your tennis hero, it is important to remember that everyone has their unique playing style and what works for one player might not necessarily work for you as well. For instance, in my case I always wanted to play with the pro stuff because Roger was my favorite player growing up. But of course I knew that when I go to the pro stuff I would hinder my game style. So I chose the Hatsby Pro which Novak Djokovic endorses. I didn't like it back then but now I do. And I knew when I would change to the pro stuff I couldn't play my tennis on a clay court which I am playing a lot during summer. It is crucial to test a racket before buying it. This is of course obvious, but I'm sure some of you and myself as well did not test a racket properly before we bought one. Not only does this ensure that you're getting a racket that it feels comfortable in your hand, but also allows you to get a sense of how the racket performs on the court. This can especially be important if you are someone who is very particular about the type of racket. Again, I made the mistake buying the Bubble Up U-Drive Tour in 2018 because I thought it would help me generate easier power than my head speed pro. What ended happening is that every time I go for my normal forehand ball I destroyed almost the back fence. So during mid-season I have to change to basically my new Headspeed Pro from 2018. Guys, and if you find this video helpful thus far, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel so I know that I'm on the right path with my content. Thank you very much. It is very important to find a grip that fits your hand very good because a poorly fitting grip can make it very difficult not only ma maintain control over your shots but also be very uncomfortable to play over a prolonged period of time. Not only that, but it can also increase the likelihood of tennis elbow weight. If the grip does not fit in your hands, it is either too small or too big, you will hold the grip more tightly. This can increase more arm soreness the next day, but also increase the chance for more inflammation and eventually lead to something like a tennis elbow. It is very essential to consider the weight of a racket because some players like heavier racket for an increased stability, others may find that a lighter racket allows more for greater maneuverability and power and it suits them better. Consider not also static weight but swing weight as well. If you cannot handle a high swing weight, you are more prone to an injury like a tennis elbow which takes a very very long time to recover from. So better find your swing weight range which you can handle very easily. And finally, while I know it can be very tempting to buy a racket because of its looks, it is important to remember that appearance should be secondary to its performance. It is better to choose a racket that feels comfortable and suits your playing style rather than one that looks flashy but may not perform as well on the court for you. Again, I can talk about myself. Last year I changed to the Head Gravity Pro and I don't even like this color a little bit. So, so bad in my opinion, but the way I'm playing with it is absolutely worth it. And guys, if you're looking for a new racket, the comparison between free Head MP rackets might be helpful for you. Check it out here.